Hey everyone, I'm Max Murphy and you're watching Mac News Weekly number 85, sponsored by Gibraltar Management. Here's the Mac News from this week. August 28th, this Friday, is a date that we've been looking forward to for more than a year now. Apple announced that the next iteration of their operating system, Snow Leopard, will be available this Friday at Apple stores, Apple resellers, as well as online. In fact, you can pre-order online now. Snow Leopard is built on speed. Apple engineers would find many of the existing projects that were in the Mac OS by making them smaller and faster. At the time of filming, Apple has given us no information regarding the time of release for Apple stores, but my guess is it will be sold during normal hours. No 6 p.m. release because it isn't too hyped. Snow Leopard starts at $29. Apple has finally responded to the FCC's inquiry into the Google Voice fiasco in a very public way. The official response to the Federal Communications Commission was posted on Apple's website, and the most interesting part was that in fact they have not denied the Google Voice app yet, but it is still under review and delayed until further notice. Apple notes that their contract with AT&T prohibits them to approve any VoIP app that runs over the cell network, and they are somehow unsure how the Google Voice application works, which isn't necessarily the issue because it could always run over Wi-Fi, but because it closely mimics what the iPhone already has. Apple says that, of course, Google is free to create a Google Voice app that runs through Safari. On the other hand, one of our favorite bloggers, Michael Arrington from the popular TechCrunch calls response, among other things, untrue and misleading. Apple said that the application was not denied and still in the review process. Arrington says that the statement is false. In fact, Google and another third-party developer confirmed that it was denied. He goes on to say that Apple will eventually approve the application as long as Google makes sure it does not take over native features. You can find the link to Michael's entire post in the show notes at macnewsweekly.com. It hasn't really been the best week for Apple. The UK-based Sunday Times wrote a profile piece on Steve Jobs and interviewed many former employees who related him to a dictator. The piece also goes on to how Steve Jobs was interviewing a candidate for a job and asking inappropriate questions about things that don't even relate to business and then gobbling like a turkey. What makes the story even worse is that Apple PR tried to stop the publication of the piece because they discourage profiles. I understand protecting the company's values, but to go as far as stopping an entire piece is just another story. A big highlight of the iPhone 3.0 software is that developers can now implement turn-by-turn -turn directions into apps. The most anticipated turn-by-turn -turn app was finally released stateside and in Europe this week, TomTom. Tom. There are different versions of the apps for different countries, but in the United States, the maps for the US and Canada cost $99. From what I've seen online, the app is very nicely designed, but the actual size of the app is heavy, with some maps weighing in over a gigabyte. Currently, TomTom only works on the iPhone 3G and 3GS due to their GPS chips. However, TomTom is currently developing a dock-like device that would attach to the window of your car that will give your original iPhone and iPod Touch GPS capabilities. If you have issues waking up like me, the Philips Wake Up Light sounds nice. For $200, you will be awoken with a nice soft light. It also includes a built-in iPhone and iPod dock to play your music. And before we go, it's time for the Mac News Weekly Tip of the Week. We'll show you software tips and tricks that will help you get the most out of your Mac. Today's tip is my favorite Easter egg hidden in the Mac operating system, drag and drop to Google. If you're reading a report and need to quickly Google a word that you may not know, simply double click on the word and then drag it to the Safari icon on your dock. It will Google the word for you and you don't even need to press enter. This is a great time saver. That's it for this week. Be sure to join us sometime next weekend for a review on Snow Leopard. I'm Max Murphy, and so it goes, and so do I.